Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at parallel lines. So hopefully you know that parallel lines are two lines that will never meet. So here we go, here's uh, two ex uh, sorry, an example here. These two lines are continued forever and ever, are never going to meet, and we call them parallel lines. On the diagram, you can always tell parallel lines because they'll always have two arrows. So the two arrows here, again, tell me that these two lines are parallel. And what we're going to have a look at today are all the angles associated when you have a line passing through them. So in this case, here's the line passing through the two parallel lines. So a few things to say before we get going. The first thing is if I get a bit of tracing paper and just trace that cross there, this obtuse angle here that I'm shading in, if I rotate it round, you'll see that it's also the same angle there. So this obtuse angle is the same as this angle here. And obviously we knew that from the basic angle stuff uh, on the other video, that opposite angles for, for, for two straight lines are the same. And again, I'll use a different colour this time. If I shade in my acute angle there and rotate it round, as we can prove again, opposite angles are the same. So the two acute angles are the same and the two obtuse angles are also the same. So what's cool about this is, again, if I just go over, so my black one is the obtuse and the red one is the acute, if I slide that down here, you'll notice that the obtuse angle is the same. And if I put it over again, hopefully you can see that the acute angle, the one in red, is also the same. And again, if I was to put it the other way around, like so, and again, bring it down, you can see that, again, the two obtuses are the same and the two acutes are the same. So that's the first thing to recognise when dealing with parallel lines, is that the acute angles and the obtuse angles are the same. OK, so if you remember that, you'll always get half the marks because you know what the actual angle size is. Just want to make a quick point before I go on to do some more examples. So if I put this back on there and I just shade in Again, the obtuse angle there and the acute angle here. On this one, if I come over here and do exactly the same thing, so it doesn't quite line up, in fact, I'll just do it again. So if I do it here, the obtuse angle and the obtuse angle are obviously going to be the same, and the acute angle and the acute angle are going to be the same. And if I slide it down to this one, just as over here, they're going to be the same. Now, if I have my parallel lines and I have a different line going through them, this, or these angles here, are not the same over here, as you can see by the, that bit of tracing paper, okay? So the rules of parallel lines only apply if it's the same line going through. So these ones here, the acute angles and obtuse ones will be the same as these ones. But if I come over here to this separate line, completely separate line, they are not the same. There is one exception to that, which we'll come to later on, but just for now, just to raise the point that you, these lines, these rules only apply for the line going through the parallel lines. So you often might have heard there's some key words that go along with parallel lines. First one here is corresponding. So this is a key word that you must learn. Corresponding angles are the same. So basically what we're saying is if I've got this angle up here, the top right, Using the corresponding rule, it says that the other top right angle down here is the same. And if you look up here again, this angle here was the same as this angle here. So if I was to use my tracing paper, oh, it's this one here, isn't it? If I was to use my tracing paper and come down, it's saying that this angle is the same as this angle. Uh, likewise with the uh, bottom right, bottom right, they're going to be the same. Top left, top left, bottom left, bottom left. So if you're basically using your tracing paper, and going down and saying this angle would be there if I use tracing paper, that's called the corresponding rule. Another way to remember it is we've got two angles. One's always going to be inside the parallel lines. One's always going to be outside. So there's another little thing that might help you. Some people use the F angle or use the F to try and spot it. 
Now you can do that. I tend to try and avoid it because then people say the reason is it's an F angle and you don't get any marks for that. You have to use the word corresponding. But if it helps you to spot it, by all means, use the fact that you can use F angles on this. Just as I'm doing here. So there we go, there's your F there. And again, there's your F there. So you can use F angles to help you see it, but please use that keyword corresponding. The second rule to have a look at is called the alternate rule. And again, alternate angles are the same. Now in this case, both angles are inside the parallel lines, but they're on alternate. They're on different sides of the line going through them. As we saw here, they're, they're obtuse, obtuse, they're the same, acute, acute, they're the same. So if you're using this rule, we use the keyword alternate. And just like them, they were F, you can also use Z to try and help you spot the alternate angles, but key word there, use the word alternate. And the last rule is the interior angles. Okay, so interior are on the inside, obviously, because it's interior, inside the parallel lines, but in this case, they're on the same side. Now, they're different. It's not, they're not the same. They are different angles. But one's obtuse and one's acute. And as you might have guessed, if we look up here, when you have your acute and your obtuse, they're actually on a straight line. So interior angles, when you add these together, they should equal 180 degrees. That's why I've done them in slightly different colors to help you with that. Okay, so they're the three rules that we're gonna be using in the examples that are to follow. So let's actually have a look at some examples. So we'll start off with this one over here. Now, I've been told that this angle here is 120. So if I use the corresponding rule, i.e. if I was to trace this and move it down here, top right, top right, using the corresponding rule, I'll just put C to, to reference corresponding, A will be 120. You've got two choices for B. You could use the fact that they're opposite angles to say that that's 120. Or again, you can use the alternate rule. So there's me highlighting my Z to say that A and B are alternate. So two different ways that you could work out what B are. As long as you explain what you're doing, you get the mark. So you can use opposite angles there, or you can use A and B are alternate. This example here, so I'm going to go with 150. So if I was to trace this and move it up here, D would also be 150 because it's corresponding. You could then use the fact that C and D are on a straight line with each other to show that C must be 30 because it's on a straight line. Or you could also use the interior rule and say that 150 here and C must up to 180. So again, C would be 30. So again, different rules here that you could do to get the answer. This one here, lots of people go, oh, is it corresponding, is it alternate, what is it, what is it, what is it? Well, in this case, there's actually no rule that links the 60 to E. So what you have to do is start filling in some angles that you know. So a very common one that people do recognize is go, okay, well, opposite angles are the same. So I'm gonna fill that in. In which case, if opposite angles are the same, that's 60, I can then use the interior rule and say, okay, these must add up to 180, so E must be 120 using the interior rule. Or you could have gone angles on a straight line and said, okay, that's 120 then, because it's on a straight line with 60, and then use the alternate rule. Or you could have used corresponding with 60 to show that that is 60, and then again, straight line. So there's many, many, many different ways you can do this, as long as you are clear and show the examiner what method you're doing, you should be absolutely fine. Same thing with this one, let's have a go. This one is 30, so I'm gonna trace it, bring it down here, top right, top right. So G must be 30 because it's corresponding. H must be 30 because it's opposite. And then F, so different ways you can do this. If you know that's 30, you're on a straight line, so you can say that that's 150. You can use the fact that that is uh, 30 and use the interior rule. Um, yeah, so different ways, again, that you can work that one out. But again, F of 150, and then the two 30s. Again, you can test, test that's right as well, because look, these are alternate as well. So this time, I've got my straight line going through here, and I've got a different straight line going through here. So remember, this has nothing to do with the second line over here. So for now, I'm just gonna cover it up, and I'm going to ignore it, just so I don't get confused. So again, there's no rule that links 100 and I, so I'm just going to start filling in ones that I know. Well, opposite angles are the same, 
these two are opposite, so I'm just put a little opposite there to explain what I've done. And then if I was to sketch this, move it down there, bottom left, bottom left, using the corresponding rule, I can work out that I would also be 100. Okay, again, there's different ways you can do it, but I think that's probably the most obvious. Once you've done that one, I'm now going to work out what J is. So again, I'm going to cover this one up because these are not related. That's 40. Again, there's no rule that links them, so I'm going to start filling in some rules that I do know. Well, if that's 40, I can use the alternate rule to prove that that is 40. Then I can use, sorry, I better put an A for alternate there. Then I can use the facts on a straight line. Therefore, that would be 140, so straight line. I could have gone corresponding and sketched it and brought it down here to show that that was 40, and again, used a straight line. Either way, absolutely fine. Getting a little bit trickier now. This time I've got two parallel lines. They're not obvious, they're not straight, like I've been doing all my other examples. They're now going at um, sort of a slightly diagonal uh, way. So what you can do is you can turn your page round if it helps you. Most of the time it does. In which case, if I do this, and you can also, what might be an idea to help, is extend the lines. And if you have a ruler, I'd recommend using a ruler, but I've left mine in my drawer. So if you extend the lines, hopefully it might help. And you can see that this angle here, if I was to sketch it and bring it down here, K would actually be down here. So if I go back, I say, OK, if I know that angle, I know what K is. And here is a triangle. So hopefully you remember that angles in a triangle add up to 180. So what you can do is 70 plus 50 is 120. Then 180, take away the 120, leaves you with 60. So that must be 60. And then using the correspond, ooh, not 66, 60. Then using the corresponding rule, because remember we traced it down to there, K would also be 60 using the corresponding rule. Okay, so if it helps, twist the parallel lines around so they're um, sort of horizontal to you, makes it think a bit easier to see. Again, extending the lines also helps. This one here, I've got uh, two sets there, and, oh, sorry, a set of parallel lines there, and another set here. But again, don't let it put you off, just take it step by step. I'm gonna cover up the bottom pair, and just look at the top. So there's one parallel line, there's one parallel line. So if this is 100, I can use the interior rule, that they add up to 180, to prove that that is 80 degrees, using the interior rule. And I can use the fact it's on a straight line with M to work out that that is 80. So straight line. Or you can use the fact that, look, there's the Z. You can say that M and L are alternate as well. Different ways you can do it. And again, I'm going to cover up the top, do exactly the same thing. So there's a parallel line, there's a parallel line. Using the interior rule, I worked out that that is uh, going to be 30. And again, using the alternate or the fact it's on a straight line with 150, I can work out that N will also be 30. So don't let it put you off that there's more than one parallel line. Just take it step by step. These last two examples are illustrating the point I was making earlier over here, where this line has nothing to do with this line. And you might remember I said there is one exception. This is it. The only time that if you've got two parallel lines that this line will affect this line is if you've got another set of parallel lines. So basically, if you've got two parallel lines there, two parallel lines going through it, then they do affect each other, and this is how they do it. By using the interior rule, these are going to add up to 180, so that's going to be 100 using the interior rule. And then if I rotate my page round, again, I'm going to use the interior rule to prove that that angle there is 80. And then again, I'm going to use the interior rule there to prove that that's 100. And what you'll notice is that in a parallelogram, again, because there's two sets of parallel lines, opposite angles are the same, okay? But use the interior rule to get all the way around, but then you should spot that parallel parallelograms, opposite angles are the same. And I'm gonna use that in this diagram here. So this is exactly the same, except my angles, sorry, sorry, not my angles, my straight lines, my parallel lines are just extended. But in the middle, I still have a parallelogram, okay? In which case, I'm gonna use that rule there. The opposite angles are the same. So that's 120, because that's 120. And I'm gonna use the interior rule to work out that this angle here must be 60. In which case, really easy, opposite angles are the same in this case. So that angle there must be 60. 
angles on a straight line add up to 180. So again, I can work out that that is 60. Okay, so that's the only time that one line will affect the other if they're actually two sets of parallel lines. So there's a few questions there to help, uh, sorry, a few things there to help you, uh, a few examples. Um, hopefully that'll be useful for the homework and obviously revision. Thanks guys.